Brad, first of all, congratulations and welcome to Detroit. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's, it feels great. It's an honor to be a part of the Lions family. And I feel like I've, I've, I've said one pride like a thousand <laughs> times, but I can't stop saying it. I keep saying that. Like, already got it driven in my blood, but I'm very excited to get started and uh, I couldn't I couldn't be happier to be a part of Lions organization. Well, keep saying it. Lions fans love it. We love having you here sitting down with us here today. We're enjoying getting to know you a little bit. So let's start here. Walk me through the process of what it was like for you when you first heard from the Lions till the day you got offered the job. <laughs> it's, it's so much that goes into where you try to prepare as much as you can for when you hear about you might get an opportunity and everybody's giving you advice but the one probably the one most impactful piece of advice I got is that they're all different like each interview is different and so again me my first time going into this interview process uh, that first time with the lines you know it's like we're in a virtual format and a little nerves going a little bit. And so, but I say very quickly into that first interview, uh, the nerves went away pretty quickly. And, and, it, and it truly was because of Ms. Hamp. And uh, she just had such an infectious soul that just really it transformed. And I've told the story many times, it's like it transformed it from a, from a virtual Zoom experience to we're just sitting around by the fireplace getting to know each other. And, uh, and, and I never forget, I told my wife immediately, I said, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and it, it just truly, it just blew me away. And it was a first class, first class experience through every step of the way. The follow up dialogue with Rod and Chris and Mike has just been A1. I couldn't be happier. And, you know, you just, when you feel it in your gut and that you feel like you just know something is right and you feel it. And when I came up to my sec second interview, I'm in the building, I said, this is right. I said, this, this is where I'm supposed to be. And I said that before I even was offered the job, so I was hoping <laughs> I was right, but, uh, but I'm, I'm so, so happy it all worked out. But every step of the process, it just was A1 class, first class, and couldn't be more excited. Well, clearly they felt the same way. They talked a lot leading up to this hire about how they wanted to find somebody who shared the same vision as them, the same values that they wanted to bring to the organization. When you had those conversations with them, whether it be over those virtual uh, video conferences or when you came here for the first time, what stuck out to you about the vision that they had that matched up with the vision you had? Yeah, exactly. That's a great question. So first, it was such an emphasis on uh, the a, a collaborative approach and the inclusivity. And that's something that in my time with the Rams, that was such a big part of our philosophy. And it was such a, an, an important ingredient in the recipe for success that we had. And you don't think about it. You think about all these other moving parts and components when you think about the whole organization, the whole team having success, but truly the collaboration, the open communication, just being one as a team and just not like taking your ego out of it and knowing that it's all about the team and no one's bigger than the team. It just was an instant recipe for success. And so when I saw, when I heard that that was the vision that was, you know, that was being wanted, I said, this is a perfect, I mean, this is a perfect alignment because I truly feel like the recipe for success is having a, is having a line building, a collaborative building and a, a very inclusive culture. One of the things that Rod talked about in the announcement that the Lions were hiring you was your emphasis on analytics. Yeah. Help us understand exactly what that means and, and how that applies in scouting. Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, I can go through a, a lot of different avenues because <laughs> I have a... We probably don't have time today I, I, I have, to touch on all of it. I have a great appreciation <laughs> for the analytics aspect of it. But, you know, first of all, it's, you know, you have to look at how you're going to use the analytics. You know, you can have a lot of analytics available to you, but what lens are you going to use it for? How are you going to slice up the data that, that's available to you? And, you know, the one thing when I first was really discovering how impactful the analytics were was the experience of going into a school and everybody wants to talk to all these different sources and everybody wants to get the best information and they will talk to this equipment manager and this coach and you know something on the academic and everybody wants to get the best information and you're trying to decipher through you know was this right or is, is this person really shooting me straight 
And I said, well, if we're going into these schools trying to search for the best information, the most accurate information, why would you not utilize this information of data points that's actually factual, that's actually happened? You know, so it just made sense. And so the more I looked at it in that light, I said, you know, I think the analytics is something that is a good quality control piece. Um, it, it, it holds you accountable, you know, and it's, it's something that you should, you know, respect and utilize. It's not everything, but I do think it's a very helpful resource. Well, we want to get to know you and how you approach scouting. So how would you describe your philosophy when it comes to evaluating players? Yeah, so obviously there's some core traits that I think are really, really important, you know, when I'm looking at an evaluation of a player. And, you know, um, my first GM that I ever worked under, Charlie Army, you know, he was the one that really taught me just basically the foundation of player evaluation. And he almost says, like, it's almost building a house. And he said, you know, Make sure you can rate the athletic ability, the competitiveness, and the instincts of the player, right? So once you got that house and that foundation built, then you can start putting the other parts, like we would say the furniture, into the house. You get into all those position specifics. But core traits that really stand out to me is that, you know, I love players that are smart, that are passionate, that are instinctive, that are relentless, and that are explosive. And so those are the traits that, you know, I'll be looking to bring to the Detroit Lions. Who would you say has influenced your philosophy the most that you have worked with? Oh, uh, I would definitely say Les Snead, my former GM. Um, you know, a, a lot of influence on not only those traits and those philosophy, but just having a, um, he always talked about keeping the main thing the main thing. And so through all the, through all the analytics and through all the, you know, research and data, it's still football, you know? And so that's what I really appreciated. Uh, Les knew that I'm, straight football to the core. Uh, I came up as just grinding my teeth as just a scout from just an in-house to an NFS combine scout. So that's the core of what I believe in truly evaluating a player. And so I really appreciate it with all the other components that come in. Less as I was like, just keep the main thing, the main thing, so. You really have had an interesting path to where you are now because you started in the NFL as a PR intern <laughs> and then switched over to the football side of things. What made you successful in climbing the ranks in that unique type of way? Yeah, it's a great question. It was funny, you know, when I, before I got to my second interview here and was in the building, uh, this was my first time in the, I was in my first time in the building since I actually interviewed for a PR internship oh, here wow. with the Lions. <laughs> and uh, again, I was trying to get my way into the NFL. And so I'm sending out my resumes because I had a PR, in, you know, um, a PR degree. And, um, you know, it ended up being with the Rams, but you know, it, it, it's, it's, um, I think it was very helpful in terms of, I do have a passion for writing and, uh, obviously have a high passion for football. So, you know, you have to do so much writing in that PR field and, you know, pay attention to that. It's just that passion for writing I had and the passion for football just lined up very well to get my start in the scouting. Business. All right, last question for you here. I know it's been a whirlwind of a week accepting this job, but one of the things that's been talked about is uh, your relationship uh, to Luther Bradley, a Lions <laughs> legend here. You know, it's been talked about that you came here for Thanksgiving games as a kid. Now you're going to be the GM. Has it really sunk in yet, the reality of this new position? Well, I was telling somebody earlier, I said, I, I, I think uh, – it feels funny saying Luther because I've called him my Uncle Ruff. He's been my Uncle Ruff forever, so I always try to have to fix it and say, oh, no, it's Luther, not Uncle Ruff. But <laughs> I think he's actually enjoyed it more than I've actually enjoyed it. He texted me the other day. He said, I feel like I'm big again. I feel like I'm important again. But he's been great. You know, um, we spend a lot of holidays here in Detroit. And, you know, obviously my mom's brother and – you know, he run one that opened my eyes up to Detroit Lions football and just the tra all the tradition, the history. And I was telling my wife the other day, it's like, you know, we went through it with Uncle Ruff. And so now, you know, Thanksgiving will never be the same again. So uh, I, it's, he, he's, been, he's been a great influence on, on me, uh, very positive. Uh, he's, he's very active in the community. He tells me, uh, he's telling me all about, you know, the peer pride programs and everything that they do with the former players. So, you know, um, when he's telling me about that, it really related to the same culture that, you know, that I would envision to being here with the Lions is that everybody's inclusive and collaborative and working together.
Well, Brad, thank you so much. Congratulations once again, thank and we look so forward much. to having you for many more Thanksgivings. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.